There's Scott Joplin, and he wrote the Maple Leaf Rag. Here's Jelly Roll Morton, and this gentleman's a very interesting person. He spanned the ragtime into jazz, and a very, very strong personality, and, a, and an, an amazing, a genius musician. Outstanding ragtime piano player, and then in 1923, he started recording jazz. He started off with Jelly Roll's Society Orchestra, and then I think 23, 24, 25, he came up with uh, Jelly Roll Morton and his Jazz Hounds, I think was the name of the band. Um, if we go one more. Going back to 1904, turn of the century. What do you think the most popular music of the day is? Do you think it's ragtime? Do you think it was John Philip Sousa with his concert band? How about Italian opera? In 1904, on one of those 78 records, this gentleman, he's from Italy, and he, and he lives in New York, and he goes back and forth across the Atlantic to do performances in Italy, in England, in New York. And he's extremely popular. And in 1904, he recorded an Italian tenor opera piece that was the very first million seller in 1904. That was huge. It's a lot of albums to sell. And they're just singles. You have, you have one song on one side, you flip it over, and there's another song on the other side. So, and if we go ahead one more. That's an operatic stage outfit, okay? There's the Victrola a wind up. You can see the handle over here on the right side. You'd wind that up to, to, to wind up the spring and then push the button, and then you could adjust the speed. You could speed it up or slow it down. And that's just a copy of one of their performances in London. This is a good one. We'll stop here for a second. So 1904, 1910, we've got Papa Jack Lane and his Reliance Band. And in New Orleans, you've got a lot of parading brass bands doing private, private functions, parties, dances. And there's an area down in the French Quarter called Exchange Alley. Now again, nobody had cell phones. You didn't have a telephone in your house. So the musicians would go and hang out around Exchange Alley. And the band leader, Papa Jack Lane, would drive by with his horse and buggy and say, Richard Scott, I need a trombone player on a gig at, from 6 to midnight on State Street. Here's the address. Can you meet me up there? And I, I need seven other guys. We've got to have a full band. This is a, this is a big party. Richard's also one of the best trombone players for early trad music as well. So, we're not going to pull on the trombone. <laughs> so, that, that's how they would put their bands together. Word of mouth, guys talking to other guys, here's the gig, we need this many people, and they would go and do a performance in 1910. And now we'll switch to the next one. There's Papa Jack Lane, and he's leading a band here in New Orleans, a drummer, band leader, and he's, what's really interesting about this band, and the next one, let, let's see if we go ahead, here's the Onward Brass Band in 1911. Again, in New Orleans you have, and, and anywhere in the country, you've got a lot of segregation. It's, it's, it's a pretty nasty time. You've got um, groups that are not allowed to do certain things with other groups. Most of the musicians got along just fine. So you would have Papa Jack Lane's band, I think, was one of the first groups to have a, a, a Creole musician play with him. The Onward Brass Band was a group predominantly of African Americans. And they're doing parades all over the city. And you can hear it. There's, there's no air conditioning. Your windows are open. If the band's playing somewhere, you're going to hear it. You're going to get excited. Let's go and find out what's going on. That, that was a big part of, of the city. So 1910, we've got all these different brass bands. The important thing 
to understand with these brass bands is what's happening in the future. Because the jazz era is about to begin. The very first jazz record was made in New York City in 1917. But it was all musicians from New Orleans. What happened was, in 1916, you had a band that left from New Orleans and went up to do a performance in Chicago. And it was Johnny Stein's Dixie Jazz Band, J-A-S-S. -S. It's the first band to use that word within a band's name. It didn't have anything to do with the style of music. Didn't, didn't, it wasn't established as a, as, a, as a genre yet. It was just part of the band's name. They went up to Chicago. And in Chicago, the band split up. And one of the gentlemen in the band took a number of players from that band, brought up some more musicians from New Orleans, and formed his own band called the original Dixieland J-A-S-S -S Band. They were a huge hit in Chicago. And from Chicago, a promoter picked them up, said, I've got a, I've got a great supper club in New York City, and I want you to come and play there. So they left in January of 1917, they came to this location, and this, this is a very historic location. It, it was first of all Ryzen Weber's Supper Club, and he had four floors with music entertainment on each level. And on one of the floors was a big supper club, so it was a great big huge rectangular room with a hardwood floor, dance floor, taking up the majority portion of the room and then a perimeter going around like a big horseshoe of all the tables set up and then on one end a bandstand the band would play well they, they traditionally had concert bands there so not a full 30 piece or a 60 piece concert band but maybe a 15 to 20 piece concert band and uh, these five guys there's, there's an article in the New York Times saying these five guys make more sound than a full concert band in this supper club. Also, just around the corner from where they're located is Victor Records and Columbia Records, the two companies manufacturing and recording. Columbia Records pulled them in and recorded them and, and had them do two cover songs, uh, Darktown Strutter's Ball and Back Home Again in Indiana. And then they didn't put it out. They said, this is noise, this is, this is not music, and we're gonna, not going to distribute it right now. And February of, of 1917, Victor Records recorded them with two of their own original songs, Pixie Jazz Band One Step and Livery Stable Blues. And this is 1917. The first million seller was 1904. So what's the math? 1904 to 1917. 13 years. 13 years. This is the next million selling record. It's, it's huge and it's original American music. So they're the first, and it's pop music, it's music for dancing. This band recorded a lot of original songs and they're all very similar. This particular piece, we're going to play it for you right now. Um, not, not livery stable, but on the flip side of that is a song called Dixieland Jazz Band One Step. That's what we're going to play for you right now. So th this would have been on that million seller on the first jazz record that came out in February of 1917. Are you enjoying the, the, the history of this and understanding? And
one, one thing to keep in mind, that this history is very, very complicated. It's layered with lots and lots of information. My more focus is on, on the recorded jazz, but there's so much going on while all of this is happening. There's a lot of bands here in New Orleans, there's a lot of bands up in Chicago, there's bands playing on the riverboats going up and down between here to St. Louis and up, and they're all coming up with new, fresh ideas, writing new songs, really getting ready to explode into what was known as the jazz era. So, New York City was the recording hub, but that was only the tip of the iceberg. There was a lot of other things going on all over. King Oliver and his Creole Jazz Band, 1922. We're going to play a song right now. We've got a choice of either High Society or Dr. Jazz. Okay, we're going to do Dr. Jazz. This is, this is a song that they wrote. In, in 1926 and recorded it in 1927. And it was also recorded by hundreds of other jazz musicians, including Louis Armstrong. Uh, so a lot of bands had hits on this song. Here we go. convinces Louis Armstrong to leave because Louis was happy being a side <coughs> player and Lil said you need to you need to break out on your own and be a band leader and she convinced him to leave and they, they went up to New York and played with Fletcher Henderson's band and uh, she said well you need to sing as well, well are you going to leave the band and you're going to sing well okay they go up to Chicago and in 1925 he records Louis Armstrong in his hot five. Then in 26, he records Louis Armstrong in his hot seven. Then he records Louis Armstrong in his orchestra. And, and the rest is history. He's absolutely the best jazz ambassador from New Orleans, period, for this early style of music. What a gentleman, an amazing musician. So I had the opportunity to go up to New York in March and up in Corona, Queens, uh, toward where they just had the U.S. Open Tennis Championship. Um, up, up toward that area is, is a place where Louis Armstrong lived after leaving New Orleans. And uh, you can tour his home. They have the Louis Armstrong House Museum. If you're ever up in the New York area, it's well worth the trip to go up there and, and have a tour of his home. The history, the discussion, what they talk about, it's, it's really amazing. And it all ties into this music that we're playing that comes from New Orleans. We're going to do a song entitled Struttin' With Some Barbecue. This is one that Louis Armstrong recorded. short time. 
Um, I'm not sure. That, no, so this is this is Louis Armstrong in his hot five. And if we go ahead a little bit more, there should be another photo coming up of Louis Armstrong in his hot seven. There's a big spider bit. There's Louis Armstrong in his hot seven. And locally, here's the Preservation Hall Jazz Band. They can continue to carry on the tradition of early New Orleans music. And here's the Palm Court Jazz Cafe. They continue on this music. Those are two very important places in the city. There's Richard Moten on bass. In New Orleans today, we still have a lot of bands carrying on the tradition of, of keeping this music alive. Just and there's there's uh, this gentleman right here performing in a band. And this is and here's a poster of, of jazz history, and it has a lot of elements that you can look at and, and get a quick glance of what, what's coming up on a hundred years of jazz, all started in this city. We're going to wrap it up with one more song. And just so we don't have to keep it, I'm not going to tell you the name of this, but I'm going to ask afterwards what it is.